Well, welcome to our Tuesday Live Leadership Chats. Today I'm talking with Kath Talek, who's the Emerging Leaders Program Director for Arrow Leadership. And today we're talking around what is she noticing uh, with Christian leaders currently, so right now, but also a fascinating thing called an organisational sailor. Uh, my name is Kylie Butler and I'm a part of Christian Coaching Institute, which is Australia's leading Christian coaching organisation. We've been coaching and training leaders in coaching for over 10 years now. So, Kath, before we jump into today's topic, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what role you're currently fulfilling, and a little bit about what you love doing. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having me again. It's great to be here. Um, I, so uh, I am the Program Director for Emerging Leaders with Arrow Leadership Australia. And Arrow Leadership is interested uh, in Christian leaders in Australia and invested in empowering uh, people in leadership, um, in the church, in parachurch, in NFPs, in education, um, and young leaders as well across Australia, across denominations. Uh, we're interested in investing and empowering those leaders, which is a real joy to be a part of. Uh, and my little tiny piece of that is to look after the Emerging Leaders Program, uh, which is all church leaders. Um, I was a church leader myself for about a decade. I worked in generations ministry in a Baptist church here in Queensland. Um, and uh, I just fell in love with leadership development, really just saw God at work in um, in raising people up in their potential um, and particularly young people. Um, and so I, I made a transition from that sort of local pastoral ministry, much of which I still very much miss, um, and into Arrow Leadership, where I get to work cross-denominationally with some of the most incredible leaders um, in the church in Australia. They do about an 18 month program with us at Arrow. Um, and I cannot tell you how much I've learned and how much I have enjoyed uh, that role for the past few years. Yeah. And what do you love doing, Kath, outside of work? I know you love your work. <laughs> <laughs> I do love my work, actually. Um, I am a high level extrovert. So anything people orientated is good for me. I might, if, uh, um, if you want to talk about love languages that aren't really love languages, uh, fine dining is one of mine. Oh. So I, <laughs> I, uh, I enjoy, I'm a bit of a foodie. I enjoy um, a really good meal, of course, with friends. Um, I love nature. Um, as a family, we love to bushwalk and kayak. We live on the bay here in Queensland. So uh, we're on kayaks and stand up paddle boards as much as possible. Um, and I'm a big reader. I love, love, love to read. And in the last few years, actually, I've really invested some time into reading novels again. So I've gotten into uh, crime novels, which is a bit wow. niche, isn't it? But um, it's a real good escape for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, Kath, we talked around about probably 15 or 16 months ago when, you know, COVID was new and interesting and fresh and we didn't quite know what was going on. But we are now, you know, well over 12 months, 15, 18 months down the track. What are you noticing now in the Christian leadership landscape? Yeah, a, a lot actually. I think um, I, I think there's a couple of things that I'm just um, so impressed by, like the resilience of uh, leaders in Australia is just remarkable, and um, they're up against it. You know, like they have had a season of really aggressive decision making, having to make decisions that literally hours later have to change because mm. that's the pace of change um, that we've experienced in um, in restrictions and lockdown and um, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone sort of feels that pain, I think. Um, and I think church leaders in particular have sat in this really unique position of, of having to be leaders in their community, you know, like uh, representing the church uh, in their community by following um, government restrictions and, you know, laws and everything else that comes with that, but also shepherding people in a really difficult season, uh, people who are hurting and broken and struggling uh, in practical and um, emotional and spiritual ways. Uh, it's, it's been a task. It's been a significant task. And so what I'm seeing now um, everywhere is fatigue. Um, yeah. And I think that's ex that, that's expected um, and it's real and it's okay. <laughs> it's, um, I think, in the season that most people have been through and are still in in a lot of places, yeah. um, That that's realistic, is this incredible fatigue. Um, I do a session at Arrow uh, on leading from your strengths from an, a company called Ministry Insights. 
um, over in California. And uh, one of the great things that it's like a profiling um, system that profiles people's personalities and leadership yeah. styles. And um, one of the things I've noticed when COVID first hit, uh, one of the things that Leading for Me Strengths maps is how people's environments are making them adapt away from their natural styles. And one of the things that I noticed initially in COVID in that first sort of 12 months even was everybody was adapting into fast paced changes. So mm. everyone was like, everyone was just adapting into the kind of this dynamic way of changing. And it's just because we all had to, it didn't matter sort of how fast paced you are usually or slow paced or task orientated. You just had to go there. You just had to be in this fast paced place. Um, everyone was doing it regardless of your role, position, title, place in the structure. Everyone was, was adapting to be a fast paced changer. And what I'm noticing now is that everyone's coming back into their natural style and they're not moving at all. Everyone is just coming back into this position of actually just do not have the energy to adapt. I don't have the energy to be anyone except myself right now. Wow. Um, and um, I'm seeing that over and over and over again. So where I usually talk to particularly young leaders about how much energy they're expelling and being someone they're not created to be, now I'm seeing people rest in a mm. place of this is all I can be is who I am. So, um, yeah, that's a lot. But I'm seeing some, yeah. some, that's a sort of a bit of a roundabout of what I've, I've been seeing. Yeah. And if you speak around that idea of rest, like what I'm fascinated with is what our leadership has just done. And it's something that I've never seen in any other organisation before. And it's this idea of an organisational sailor. So mm. tell us, like, what? what was that how did it come about what did that mean because you just come out onto the other side of that mm, yeah uh yeah so I guess um a part of that story is personal for me um and so you know while I talk about leaders being fatigued um I'm probably one of those leaders mm. uh so I started the year um on my way to burnout and by March had burnt out um so we could talk about burnout in a different conversation I guess but um I needed to take some time off um, and what we were recognizing as an organization was how fatigued we were. Um, so, you know, while we're not leading a church, we're leading a national program that uh, values in-person mm. <laughs> gatherings. And so the rate of change for us during COVID was intense and aggressive and um, was really, really hard, hard work for all of us. Uh, plus, you know, my, my, my role and others' roles in the organization around pastoring and, and um coaching and mentoring leaders who are experiencing some pretty significant shifts and um, stuff that they were carrying. Um, so we recognised for ourselves that um, we were fatigued, that we were tired and we were struggling with things like keeping our passion levels high and motivation levels high. Um, and also we were noticing this, as I said, in the church in Australia. We were seeing Christian leaders everywhere um, being fatigued and not really having the energy to keep up with their passion or their drive or their motivation or what they felt was required of them um, day to day. And uh, so as I look to have some time off, um, as an organisation, most of us were, were looking at having time off somewhere. So while I was having sick leave because I'd completely burnt out, others were having long service leave, others were having annual leave. There was kind of like this month or like six week period where it looked like we weren't all going to be on deck at the same time. We'd made some organizational decisions around what we were actually going to do for the rest of the year. And there was sort of this gap in the in the year where we weren't doing anything uh, significantly in person. Um, and so we talked about it, um, actually, as directors, we talked about it, about this opportunity to actually take an organizational sailor. Um, firstly, for the health of us as an organization, as people, um, as part of our you know, as part of our team, you know, team mm. life and organisational life, but also hopefully as an influential piece to Christian leaders in Australia to say it's okay to stop. And, you know, when when um, we thought about this idea of sailor or surrender or Sabbath, um, really what that's about is surrender. And it's actually about saying to God as a Christian, as, as a Christian leader saying, you know what, I'm going to take my hands off the steering wheel um, and I can do that because this isn't mine. <laughs> mm. This mm. is yours. And I have enough trust in you, God, that you're going to keep the car moving. You're going to keep the car going straight. You're going to drive the car to wherever you want to drive it to. 
and I'm going to take a, a minute. I'm going to rest. I'm going to recover. I'm going to, um, you know, find space to uh, work on myself, work on some deeper level projects um, and just let God have control of the vehicle that was Arrow, that is Arrow. Um, that, that's really what it's about. You know, it's, mm. it's really about surrender. It's not about um, slamming on the brakes or, you know, wrenching on the handbrake and doing donuts in the car park. Like it's actually <laughs> just about gently taking your hands off the steering wheel and feeling perfectly safe, feeling perfectly at ease and being able to take a really deep breath because actually God is in control of this. Mm. It's God who has control of this. I um, mean, if I step away for a minute um, or six weeks, as it was for us at Arrow, um, everything's going to be fine yeah. because it's not mine in the first place. Um, and so we felt like we needed to acknowledge that, that we needed yeah. to acknowledge this actually is announced in the first place. And yeah. so uh, we did that. Um, and, um, we, what we call, we did what we call low power mode. So even though we were all working, um, we, you know, like when you turn your phone on low power mode, it only uses power for the most important apps, um, rather than, you know, some of the apps that don't need, a, you know, don't need to be on all the time. And so we did that, um, as an organization, we focused on project work, on deep work. Uh, we managed our expectations. Uh, we didn't do a lot. We, we did nothing in person. Uh, we had a team meeting once a week, where which was most, which mostly consisted of prayer and support of one mm. another. Uh, we only answered emails two days a week, so we had yeah. an out of office that said uh, we're only answering emails two days a week. So if you've sent an email outside of those times, don't expect an answer. Um, and we just, we just took a step back and took mm. a breath, um, and it was extraordinary what that's done for us as a team and what it's done for us as an organisation. Mm. And so now on the other side of that, what do you sense has been some of the um, benefits or insight that you and the team have gained by doing that low power mode? Yeah, so um, it, it's varied for different mm. people on the diff on, on different teams. I think um, we've realised, uh, well, certainly for me personally, I did a lot of work around expectation and around um the weight of expectation um and i did some work around what where were these expectations coming from mm -hmm. um and what i realized was most of the expectations that were weighty on me were created by me or were a short conversation away from changing um and uh so that was just a, an incredibly freeing exercise yeah. for me and you know it's really basic stuff that most people know like I just had this expectation on myself that I had to answer emails immediately. And so, and that was just snaking into my, all my whole life. You know, I'd be reading my Bible in the morning and thinking, Oh, I wonder who's emailing me right now. Like wow. what it was, what a silly thing to, you know, shift your focus around and yeah. realistically who's emailing you with that kind of urgency. Like if, if it's that urgent, maybe phone, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really incredible when you take a step back to see and actually you examine some of the things that are happening for you and mm. ask the question why, mm. how simply things can move in a way that is free mm. um, and in a way that is um, helpful for you to move forward in a healthy way. Um, so, yeah, there was, there was a lot of that. I think for us as a team, uh, we took a step we've always been a fairly supportive team. We really love one another. Um, and we've had to be fairly intentional about that because we're a national team. So we actually don't sit in the same office all the time. Um, but I think we really took a step toward being more supportive of one another on a personal level, like just loving each other for who we are um, and uh, praying for one another in real tangible you know, ways, really understanding each other. We really went to a new depth of understanding one another. Mm. Um, and in a lot of ways, we just hit the reset button on a heap of stuff because we were able to stop, rest, and then come back to the steering wheel. Um, and, um, yeah, there's, there's various ways that I keep thinking, oh man, if we hadn't done that organizational seller, we probably wouldn't have, um, been where we are right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Mm. Um, and I think we were we we might touch on another day, actually get you back and share about your own story. Sure. Um, but I'd love to hear, like, with that, some of the insights that you're seeing around leaders and the organisational space that you've been in, what are some of the encouragement that you have 
for Christian leaders like today for what's going on for them right now? Yeah, I think um, what I find myself saying over and over and over again to people is just slow down. Mm. And what, what was really interesting for me personally, going from burnout to low power mode, was mm. that I stopped completely. So I completely burnt out and couldn't do anything. So I had to stop completely. I did nothing. And then moved into a season of slowing down um, while we were in our low power mode in our organizational sailor. And um, so I, if you're a Christian leader, I, I, would, I would encourage you to ask the question, where do I need to stop completely? Mm. Where do I actually just need to stop? And, and that could be everywhere. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm at a point where I just need to stop everything. Yeah. Um, where, where do you need to stop completely? Yeah. And where do you need to slow down? Where where are you hurried? You know, one of the things I've I've reflected on over and over again, I still find myself in that, that space of reflection is um, about how we're created. And in in a new covenant world, you know, but post resurrection, we are literally the temple. You know, the holy temple. I am a piece of the temple of God. Um, and you know, I work with church leaders, I'm leading church leaders. And so I'm leading the holy church. So I am the holy temple leading the holy church. There's something sacred mm. about that. Mm. And when you mm. think about sacredness or something that is sacred, you don't approach those things slowly, you know, you, uh, sorry, you don't approach those things quickly. You don't, you don't approach those things quickly. You know, yeah. you don't, you don't approach something that is sacred quickly, not considering it, you know, not thinking about it, not reflecting about it, not, um, you know, cons- being considerate about what's happening in the moment. Yeah. You know, you enter sacred places and sacred things mm. and sacred opportunities slowly considering, reflecting, trying to connect your heart mm. to the heart of God in a moment. And so if I really am, a part of the temple, part of the holy temple, and I'm leading the holy church, then I have to slow down in how I do that. You know, I I was confused. I I actually thought that Christian living meant that I had to be everywhere all the time. You know, like Mm. I was trying to keep up with this idea of Christian living that meant I was, you know, balancing being a, a, a great mom and a discipler of my children, a great supporter and cheerleader and partner to my husband. I was volunteering in my church and took all of that extremely seriously. You know, my work was really important and I had to make sure I was giving everything that I could and operating on a level of integrity that was, uh, you know, unmissable. And I had to tell my neighbors about Jesus and, you know, like make sure there was, and make sure my whole list was done all the time and, you know, trying to be this, you know, this ideal of Christian living. And the only way that I could do that was to be in a hurry all the time you know the only way to be all of those things was to do it quickly (laughs) because otherwise I just didn't get it done Done. but if I'm sacred if I'm holy if my life is holy then why would I do that quickly I should be approaching my Christian life my relationship with Jesus my walk with Mm. him like it's something sacred and so Mm. that means slowing down and it means taking my hands off the steering wheel at times and saying, you know what, God, I'm going to surrender this to you because actually this is yours. Mm. Um, and so my encouragement to leaders would be, where do you, where do you need to stop? Mm. You know, what, what do you just need to stop doing? And where do you need to slow down? Yeah. And I would ask that question personally, but I would also ask that question about how you're leading as well. Mm. So in what you're leading, whether that's a group of people, whether it's a ministry, whether it's an organization, whether it's a church, whatever it is, where do you need to stop? Where does your organization need to stop completely? And where do you need to slow down? Mm. And, and how is that going to affect the health of who you are and what you're doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. what a challenge, Kat. That is so good. Um, I'm going to ask a sneaky question now that we didn't prepare for. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I did this to Bill a couple of weeks ago as well. But you've had a coach for Mm -hmm. years now you've transitioned across to um, pastoral or professional supervision as well yes Uh, but tell us around why do you think it's important for a Christian leader to have whether it's a coach or a supervisor but that external person 
to mm -hmm. be able to work through stuff with? What's why is that important for you? Yeah, I mean, le legitimately, I mean this legitimately. If I did not have uh, Miriam, who is my um, supervisor, if I did not have her, I would be burnt out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in a way that, you know, I, I would not be able to do ministry. I potentially, there would, there would be brokenness in my family. Um, you know, real big, not just red flags, like death to stuff, you know, um, because I sat on her couch and, you know, started talking and she interrupted me and said, Kath, you are in burnout. You need to go and mm. see your GP. Then called me the next day <laughs> and said, just a reminder that you're in burnout and you said you were going to go see a GP. So having somebody outside of, you know, of myself and, you know, something, sometimes when you're in that hurried mode of trying to be everything and everyone for everyone and everything, you, you have no perspective. Mm. You have no, there is no space for you to actually go, maybe there's something wrong here. Um, and so I needed someone to be able to tell me that. And mm. I, I legitimately think if Miriam hadn't said that to me that day and kept me accountable, um, then I don't, I, I would not be here. I, I would not be having this conversation with you. I would not be in leadership. I would not be in ministry. I have no idea where my faith in God would be. Um, and so that was extremely important. And it happened because I had a meeting in the calendar. I didn't seek it out. We just see each other every eight weeks. Yeah. So it just happened that in the middle of that, I was sitting on her couch in a pre-scheduled meeting and she was able to draw that out of me. And now she's still keeping me accountable in that. And we're still, and I, you know, I'm still working on, I'm still in recovery. We're still trying to, you know, mm -hmm. put it all back together and she's helping me to do that. So um, it, it is that outside person who um, has permission to say you're not okay. Yeah, yeah, so good. Thank you so much for sharing, Kath, and we'll get you back to be able to share a little bit more around your story. Uh, but Kath, thank you so much for sharing with us today and just some of the incredible insights and wisdom that you've gleaned from this season that you can just offer to Christian leaders. So thank you for being with us today and um, yeah, sharing some of your wisdom. And for those of you that are watching, it's been great to have you with us and we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at one o'clock. Have a great day.